Okay. Okay, so we're, we're going to um, just take a look at the software we're going to use to um, to flash the Leap, LeapFrog Explorer and also the software that we're actually going to put onto it. So the first thing is we've, we're going to be putting on uh, RetroLeap, which is a... Um, I'll read straight from the about section. It's a custom RetroArch based firmware for Leaps to GS and LeapPad 2 devices. Now, uh, Mac2612, who um, is the main uh, developer of, uh, of this, um, this bit of software, this platform, um, has recently been um, putting together some new releases of retro retro leap and because of the limited hardware that we're dealing with here with the leapster explorer as i said about earlier on in the video um he's not using retro arch now on this device um what he's doing instead is using uh, a port of g menu um, G menu NX, I think, um, which is effectively just a nice little front end and it allows us to run um, non lib retro emulators. Um, you'll see this when, when, when we actually put the software on, you'll see what I mean by this. But um, on the latest version of RetroLeap, which is 2.00 Alpha 4, uh, Really, the focus of the changes or the focus of this latest uh, update or these recent updates has been to improve the um, what he calls the uh, or what it is is the LF one thousand experience. Now, these devices here are um, classed as LF one thousand devices. We have these are LF one thousand, the LeapPad twos are LF uh, two thousand, and then the LeapPad threes are LF three thousand, with a few little variations in there depending on the device. But this is an LF one thousand device, pretty much the lowest spec device, um, and therefore um, he's just changed changed things up a bit in terms of the um, in in terms of the software and the front end that that's being used. Um, now that's RetroLeap. In terms of the software we're going to use to actually put RetroLeap on the device, it's this program also by Mac2612, which is SSS Flash, SSH Flash. Um, so this is the tool that we're going to use on our computer to put the software onto the device. Um, now I've actually uh, forked SSH Flash because all this software is um, for Linux. Really, it's, it's, you can run it on Windows um, because it's written in Python. You would need to download Python and um, jump through a few hoops to um, get that up and running um, on a Windows device. But there's a few little complications also on Windows devices, um, which I'll take account for on this video. So. What I'm going to be using is the fork of SSH Flash that I did. If I can just find that here. Uh, let's have a look. I'm really showing how... Oh, here we are. There we go. So this is um, the fork that I did called SSH Flash Win. And my fork here is of, of the code is really specifically for windows uh, so um, all i've done um, is to build um, the, the python files into windows executables and i've also ported the shell script that which is specifically for linux so i've i've ported that to be a windows batch file instead so um the latest release that I, or pre-release rather, that I did of SSH Flash Win um, is 0.2 Alpha. And one of the specific things I did on that was, um, as part of that release, was just to test with an LF1000 platform, i.e. the Leapster Explorer, which we're going to do today, um, and just fix several bugs uh, with my implementation, which, um, so just, just basically to get it working. Um, so that's the software we're going to use. There is also um, another bit of software which um, I'll 
come on to when we get to that part in the video but it's this it's um uh, a usb lan driver from data logic i'll go to the github repo here so this bit of software is required because when you plug in the Leapster Explorer or any, any of the LeapFrog devices, in, in fact, now, um, and try to use the SSH Flash software, it doesn't work because um, I think on one of the Windows updates last year, it might be the Creators update, um, they changed some things with how uh, devices are um uh, detected by Windows, which meant that uh, Windows now loads the wrong driver, uh, unfortunately, um, me, when you plug in a Leapster Explorer or, a Leap, or any LeapFrog device. Uh, so it just means we've got to do a bit um, of messing about there to, to try and get it um, uh, try and get it to detect properly before we start trying to do the, the, the flash. All of this, as I'm talking through it, all of this sounds like a <laughs> sounds like a massive bind, and uh, quite um, you know um, uh, you know sounds like it's quite a lot of messing about to do what we're going to do. Hopefully, you'll see that as we go on that it's really not that bad um, now. And I've I've tried with the work that I've done. I've tried just to you know make it as simple as possible. It would be lovely if we could just have a single executable that you just plug in the device, run. Uh, it puts the software on it and, and great, but we're not uh, quite at that point yet. Um, so um, I'll run through this. I'll try and be detailed and succinct and all of that. Um, yeah, let's just see how we get on. Okay.